Hi, I'm Jasmine. I'm Andrea. And this is our Summer of Socks. Yes. And, and today... <laughs> we're going to talk about how far we've come during this time. Wonderful. Let's start with you. Oh, okay. I am working on the Mad Mix Socks, which this picture is kind of small, but it is basically you use different colors and there are different um, textured patterns for the different sections of the sock to make um, sock knitting a little bit more exciting and not just um, something you do while you watch TV. So these are my <laughs> socks. They're all mixed up. There's different, they go in and out because some of the stitches actually pull the sock together so it'll um, straighten out when you wear them. I've made my leg a little longer than usual because I like a long sock. You and do. And are they, they're completely mismatched, right? Even completely. though it's the same colors? Yeah, I used four minis because I like long socks, so I need four minis to um, make them the right length. And um, these have a heel flap and gusset, which I don't normally enjoy, but it wasn't so bad. It really wasn't. And um, the heel flaps are their own little color as well. Usually it's the heel flap and gusset are one color, but I've switched that up. And I'm looking forward to getting to the toe because it's a different toe on these um, as well. It's a hat top toe. What's a hat top toe? So instead of doing your decreases on either side of your foot and getting narrower towards the tip of your toes, it is decreased on at regular um, spots all the way around like a hat is. So it's oh. more rounded. Okay. Yeah. I think I might like that because my one problem with um, knitted socks is that the toe always feels so square and pointed and it doesn't resemble the curve of my foot. Yeah. Not everybody has um, a long, short toe. A long, short toe? What's that? A long, toe. short toe? <laughs> yes. I'm your big calling. toe goes all the way to the end, <laughs> and your little toe doesn't do that, so there's always that gap in the sock. Mm. So this will mm. be interesting, and we'll let you know how that goes. But if it's like a hat, then it's almost like a, a drawstring bag, where it would cinch on both sides. Yeah. I wonder if that would fit the long, short toe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll find out. Okay. <laughs> Cause, and then we'll let you know the long and the short of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, how did we get there? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, not scripted Sorry, today. that was really, that's a normal joke. I'm feeling a bit off because of a fever. I don't know what your excuse is. So here I am. <laughs> you made me sick. You've caught my sickness. <laughs> here I am just finishing up my um, shorty socks. What was the name of this pattern? Something, something or other. Sporty socks. It was, um, yeah. Oh, well, I guess the picture doesn't there. help. Like, this was the basic B, which is the stripe one. Maybe you can show that a little bit. And then there's one called All the Frills. And this one, the name is escaping me. It doesn't but matter. But the sporty, no, the palm squad, that's it. Oh, that's because it. Because of the pom pom. <laughs> So this was um, one of three, well six because there's different variations, uh, one of six different patterns available as part of the shorty sock pattern set. There's three different patterns really and each one has two different ways of doing right. it up. So the palm squad is a cuff down um, shorty sock and I chose to do it in a gradient and I striped my my second color in just at this part where I'm doing, they called it an arch support. So it's a slipped uh, stitch section, it's much like up, right? much yeah. like your heel flap, but all the way around. So it tightens up and offers support. Which I really cool. like the way they turned out. I like that it's two toned. You only use two minis for the I whole did. pair, eh? Yeah, and then I used some scrap yarn to make the pom poms. I held three different colors of fingering weight together um, and just wrapped it around my fingers several times, 20 to 30 times before cutting it, tying it, and trimming it. There's a wonderful YouTube video all about making pom-poms. So here I am. Um, I'm now sort of attaching the second pom-pom on my finished sock. Okay. And this one here was done with three minis, and there was leftovers. Yeah. So the other socks that we knit during the knit along, if you'll remember, were this one. It's called the... 
<laughs> Fondant socks. Oh, uh, yes. And it's really pretty because on either side it's got a lace panel. And, and along the back. And along the back. Uh-huh. Oh, this one's twisted a bit so you can see where it is at the back of the leg. Mm -hmm. It has, it's a toe-up construction. It has what's called a flegal heel, which was new for you. Right, and it's all about striping in or gradiating yarn. It doesn't have to be a gradient, but it does offer a 12 um, row. row guide in order to stripe in the next color. So, so it's from the pale sort of yellow like, to the bright yellow so to the blue seamless, green. So it's as you can see. It looks like I did it with a gradiating yarn instead of four minis. It's really um, pretty. I did two at a time, toe up, as we said, and with... Whoa. Um, four different yarns going at one time because of the color changes, it was a bit of a nightmare. If you're gonna, <laughs> to be honest, if you're going to do that sock, I say one at a time, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you, you know, you're like Spider-Man and you've got, you've got all the powers. Eight arms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the other pair that I knit was the Sprocket socks. I used, I think, five different minis, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Yeah. Um, it wasn't necessary. I could have done it with four. And I didn't make the leg as long as I normally would like to. But um, it was a fun knit. And this actually matches my sprocket sweater that I knit during the uh, sweater knit along. Yeah. So, um, fun little pair of socks to knit and... Um, Coordinate with other accessories. Yes. And the sprockets, which are like the teeth on a gear are done not with a fair isle, but with a mosaic technique. So you're only working with one yarn at a time and slipping your stitches. Mm. So This has been a fun summer of socks. It has. And I'm glad for the push because normally it would take me forever to complete a pair of socks. I know some people are huge sock knitters, but I get bored. For example, single sock syndrome. I finished this one, um, it was last year. I'm pretty sure it was last year. Maybe I'll get it for Christmas. Maybe you'll get it for Christmas this year. Anyway, I, I got her to wind the second 50 gram skein of, it's called Crab Cakes. And it's sort I'm of gonna, spirals, but doesn't. It's like. It's beautiful. I like, this is the way that when I, when I dye for socks specifically, the colors um, don't pull, but they um, seem to spiral around your. And this one, a less of a spiral than, say, um, just two tones because there's lots of variation in there. Another yes. one that had lots of variation was this colorway, which is not in stock at the moment, but um, it again shows that there's three or four different tones, and when they are like that, they don't spiral so much as just blend really nicely. Yeah. It looks like stripes. It looks a little bit like a stripe, but, but they don't quite make it all the way across right. the row. So I think that after this, I am actually going to do some just plain socks when I yeah. want to have a no, I don't think about a project. Um. Before we get onto the plain socks here, I wanted to mention that um, crab cakes, which is so much fun, comes in only 50 gram skin. So if you prefer 100 grams, then a very similar colorway. Like if you think that these socks are wonderful for somebody special, and you want to recreate them, but you prefer a hundred gram skein. Beaver Meadow Trail is a very similar colorway, but, it, but won't, it has it won't spiral like that. It's a miniature wrap. Exactly, and it has little specks of gray in there as well. So Yellow. it'll be very similar, but a little little different. Yes. I think it'll be very similar actually. Yes. When you hold them, it'll it would make a really nice hat or mitts or something too. It would. And now I'm for, not done. Okay. You didn't let me talk about the frills. Oh no, the frills. <laughs> <laughs> like you want to just go on? No, I'm still knitting. Um, so I started my third, and I think it might be my final pair. Well, yes. For now. Let's say for now, my final pair for the summer of socks. I am doing the um, top down all the frills socks as part of that summerly um, shorty sock set. It was so interesting to start this because, as you can tell, I'm doing two at a time. And I'm using two circular needles so that one represents the front and the back. We both do that. Yeah, I, I prefer that. That's what I've got on here. And I'm showing you the back right now because I have put in, um, I guess you could call it a lifeline. It's a piece of scrap yarn to represent where I'm going to pick up on either side and do an afterthought heel. Oh, the does pattern, it call for that? No, the pattern doesn't. But I watched you struggle with your two at a time heel flaps and I thought... Not me. No way. 
<laughs> I'm so glad I did that for you. <laughs> yeah. I thought, no, that's all right. I'll come back to that. So this I'm is the this is the reason that knit alongs are so good because you see the struggles other people have, and you mm -hmm. can help each other find solutions. I love. Or just throw in the towel. <laughs> no solutions. I love the the frills on the the cuffs there. That was so much fun to see the end result. Not fun to start it because I think it called for... 142 stitches. Something like that. Uh, 128. So, or, yeah, something... Crazy. Crazy. So basically, your basic sock um, stitch pattern uh, number 64 or 56 or whatever the pattern called for, depending on the size you were doing. Oh, twice as many. Double. Yeah, twice as many. Oh, so not a good one for a 9 No, inch I silk. couldn't fit it on my favorite 9 inch circ. <laughs> and I even I couldn't fit it on DPNs, but it was even difficult on circular needles because there was just so many stitches that you couldn't pull out the the cable at quite the right area. I had so so much uh, trouble joining this in the round. It got easier after that. Once I joined, it was easier. Sometimes it's better to do some things one at a time. I did do one put at it time. in. I did put it to the side and oh, you I did. did. Yeah. Oh. I'm saying it was difficult because there was such a large number of stitches. Oh. To get all of them faced the right way to join in the round. And oh, then, right. And then pull the cable out at the right spots to make that possible. Um, but once I got going, there's smooth sailing from there. And they're so cute. They're so cute. So I'm really excited about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to uh, one more thing is some people are making using the 50 gram sock skeins to do, um, we don't have the other one here, but the other sock to this pair is the colors reversed. So the large section on the other sock is this burgundy color and the hearts, heart pattern is done with the light pink on the other one. Mm -hmm. And mismatched matching socks is um, really rather cool and I know that um, at least one of the people that is been knitting with us has been opting to do this kind of a sock rather than use um, her minis. So. Yeah, shout out to, I'm going to say her name, Barb. Yes. <laughs> For her lovely mismatched pairs are so inspiring. And I think she's knit like four her, pairs, possibly five. I'm really liking the color choices, mm -hmm. you know, because not everyone would think to pair those together, so it's wonderful to see. Yes. Um, and while we're talking, you were saying you just wanted to, after this, knit some straight socks. Yes. One of my favorite sock patterns um, that I've done so far is the speeder socks. I did this in our hand-dyed, naturally dyed sock yarn, but you also did it in the Superba Fair Isle. Yes. And I mention it because a number of beginner knitters have told me they don't want to tackle socks, they think it's hard, and that they might be able to do it if it were just a tube. And these are just a tube with the heel built in, and it's just a matter of increasing and decreasing without ever breaking the To make the yarn. that part of the sock wider for your heel. Without ever breaking the yarn. So it creates this, like, this little bump. Let me see if I can show you from the side. Which, honestly, I don't know if I'm doing a good job. It's just a little extra bump at the back where your heel goes. But otherwise, you're just knitting a straight tube. And the nice thing is, the, the pattern doesn't get interrupted. No, it, the like, sock doesn't at all break. It looks fantastic, and you're not weaving in any ends. Right, and th we've gotten um, we've gotten new uh, shipment of sock yarn mm -hmm. for all of you that are sick of patterning your socks. You can now just knit, knit, knit. Knit vanilla socks, but look like you did something amazing. This, right. They're called for uh, Superba Fair Isle, and we have them in five different colors. You knit. Um, this is color number one. And, well, you'll see all the different names well, on the website. I just website. wanted to point out. But there's great shades. I did it by accident, but the pattern repeats. And if you s happen to start at the same spot on your yarn, your socks will actually match all the way down. Yeah, I think you were really clever about where you finished the one sock and then... Did you have to cut away a little bit of the yarn to get, to get it to I didn't do it on purpose. I was, I was halfway finished the second sock, and I went, oh, my God, they match. Oh. Yeah. So from now on, I'm just going to watch So <laughs> if I use that yarn. And um, this was 
of hair done with one skein. And just to show the 50 gram skeins, Jasmine knit this sock actually so people would see how far 50 grams goes. This was a toe up sock, right? No, it was not. Oh. You can't do a heel flap like that toe up. Oh, no kidding. You've asked so many times and you've told people that it was toe up as well. It's not. I'm a liar. <laughs> anyway, one 50 gram skein makes a nice sock for someone with a larger foot like me and that likes a longer leg. And mm -hmm. then it's evenly divided and you don't need to worry about whether or not um, you've left enough yarn for the other ball, for the other sock. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a fantastic point. Getting two 50 gram skeins um, matching colorways means for sure you're going to have enough yarn for both socks. Yep. Uh, if you want to recreate the, all the frills in this colorway, we called it Sunshine Trail. We sunrise. Have sunrise. Sunrise Trail. My bad. Um, it's part of the sock set of the month. Or you can get a 100 gram skein in um, our usual sock set, which includes 100 grams and a mini. Perfect. Yeah. And one 50 gram skein is enough to do a shorty pair. I Maybe fingers crossed ones. because the because the ruffle and the slightly higher band. Fingers crossed. I might have to go back. I think I could make the whole foot and maybe the heel has to be a different color. Oh. Well, well that would be kind of cool. We'll see, yeah. Yeah. And so stay tuned. <laughs> so we hope that you've enjoyed knitting with us. We will be doing a another um video next week, right? Because it yeah. doesn't, we're not done until... We finish um, the weekend of Labor Day. We haven't really made it official the date. We just said Labor Day, we're finished. Um, and then that Wednesday following Labor Day, we will come on, do a quick wrap up, announce some winners um, in our draw, and yeah, get ready for the fall. Yes, and our next knit along. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Always so, lots of fun. So thank you for watching us today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And share with your friends who don't know about us. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Until next time, be natural. Be you. Bye. Bye.